Welcome to the Ridgecrest Lost and Found podcast. If you're seeing me in a different angle or a new light, it's because this is a solo episode. It's going to be great. My name is Logan. I'm Steven. A new light? I don't know. New angle, new light. The lights are actually the same. But yeah. The angle is different. Look, I can look right at you or sort of at you. So if you don't know, Steven is right there. If you haven't been in the studio yet. Logan's over there. Yeah. And that's how that works. And so we kind of put the camera here because it's the way the room works. But since it's solo, I get to cut out this chair right here. And so it's just me today. So yeah. very excited about it. I would be over there, but my buttons are over here. I yes. can't leave my buttons. And Steven needs his buttons. Yeah. There's safety. <laughs> There's safety in the buttons. Yes. <laughs> so what I figured we'd do, um, I did I haven't told you this, Steven. We have we had a request come in from a certain person who's already been on the podcast to do a episode 25 quarterly review of our episodes. It's a great idea. Based off of, uh, was it Chris White's episode where they, where he said like, we need to do more reviews. I think I said that. I know, but it was on that episode. I think that's right. So Nick Wilson has said, I, I want to come. He says, I've got notes. I think he's a great person for that. He he's very, uh, I don't know what the word I'm going to use. He's got, Info. Like he's one that he listens to every episode and he's got thoughts and feelings and opinions on every episode. I, I love a good person to hold me accountable. Good. And so I think Nick's. And I'm sure he will. Yeah. So this will be episode 22, I believe. And then episode, 21. it'll be 21. I believe so. 21 or 22. Yes. That's a, I thought I counted in Jordan's was 21. Um, it was 20 in my uh, files. So I really hope that this is 21. Otherwise I'm in an error somewhere. Other way, otherwise there's one in the ether somewhere. Yes. So he'll be 25. Um, I've got another guy coming in that I think will be really good. It's another youth pastor. You don't know him at all, but we'll see how that goes. And then a youth pastor that I don't know. That's a, that's a fresh. I know, isn't that great? <laughs> and I'm still waiting to get Jake. When is Jake coming on the, the pod? Um, never as, as of recording this, he's actually going to be here this weekend. Uh, cause we're doing uh, our charity live stream thing, but, um, probably no time to, to record an episode because we'll have been awake for 24 hours dang. playing board games. So I I can, I can get him. Are you going to give a shout out for your stream? Well, by the time this goes live, it'll have already happened. So no, we should have already done it. We uh, Yeah, probably so. Well, that's okay. Yeah. How the, how did the stream go? It was great. We made millions, <laughs> millions. <laughs> And millions. millions of decisions playing board games. That's there you go. Yeah. You want to say millions of cents, but you weren't so sure about that one either. No, no, we're not even that much. No, <laughs> maybe hundreds of cents. Oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. Maybe if, like if you get to where it's like 4 a.m. and you have nothing to do, you and him will just record a solo episode. Yeah. Where yeah. you're, where you're loopy and delirious. That'd be, that'd be great. And, and no one can stop me because I edit these and I post them. That's right. Yeah. I just want to tell you about it. So we've got that. And then I got a secret. You already know about it, but a super secret one that I'm really excited about getting involved. Somebody who does not live locally. Gotcha. I'm there. Yep. We got to get the, the details figured out, but I think we can get that, make that happen. We yeah. just got to, we got to figure out the, uh, it won't be hard. It'll be complicated, but it won't be hard. That doesn't make sense. What you just said. Complication just means that there needs to be intentional effort put in, but it's not necessarily difficult. Yep. So speaking of complex, I wanted to start off by giving a, uh, addendum, a correction yeah. and expl explanation of what was said in a previous podcast. Was it, was it Jordan's or Chris's? Uh, what are you trying to, Oh, the, I think it was, um, Jordan's because we talked a lot about Disney. I can't remember because Chris is also going on that Disney cruise. So I couldn't remember. I think it was Jordan. I think it was Jordan. So in Jordan's episode, which is the previous episode, we talked about, I gave a quick little like talking out of my butt, threw something out to see how it landed about how Disney is owned by the crown. The British crown, I yes. should say. There's yes. lots of crowns. There's only one the crown. Though. That is true. Yeah. There's only one show called the crown. Correct. And I, I heard about it on a podcast where somebody was talking about it and they said that part of the reason why Britain does not have to pay taxes is because there's some clause where they're owned by the crown 
until the death of the the death of the last descendant of King Charles the Third, which is so specific. Yes, and it's like you have to wait twenty one years or twenty something years after the death of the last descendant of King Charles the Third, and until then. Like they are controlled by the British crown. So that was my explanation. We'll get more into it, but what are your thoughts so far? Top level sounds incredibly fake. It like (laughs) it (laughs) Disney does some shady stuff to, um, sidestep the law. Uh, my go-to mention was, um, copyright law. Mm -hmm. Uh, whenever, um, Mickey mouse is about to enter, um, public domain. Yes. Um, Disney just so happens to um, make certain donations to certain people and then copyright law just happens to change to prevent that from happening. So is Mickey Mouse just never going to be public? Uh, it eventually it eventually will happen. Because like push the- there's a local uh, there's a local roofing and construction company called Watkins and they have access to the Pink Panther. Like the cartoon Pink Panther. Yeah. And I should not be talking about this because I don't know how it went down, but I think it was something to the effect of like the pink Panther trademark or picture was available Mm -hmm. and they just took it because it was like, we have access to it. Yeah. Um, And that's just wild to me. Yeah. I'm not sure on that one, but I mean, you know, Winnie the Pooh, for example, went, uh, went into public domain, I think last year or year before, like very recently. Mm -hmm. And so you had this influx of, non Disney sanctioned Winnie the Pooh content. So. How dare they? Yeah. I'm sure it was all above board um, and within the confines. One of, of them was a, um, a slasher film called, uh, Winnie the Pooh blood and honey. And that, um, awful. By all I just saw, awful. I just saw the picture of some guy wearing a Winnie the Pooh mask. Yeah. And apparently in the context of the film, he's supposed to be actually an animal, but it's clearly just a guy wearing a mask. Clearly. Um, they spent maybe like $10,000 to make the film and it, made bank so they're doing it again um and it'll probably so was that was that a failure because they said we're going to capitalize winnie the pooh slasher film we're going to do it as quickly and cheaply as we can just to get an roi to to them it was absolutely success um i would consider it a ethical failure maybe a moral failure (laughs) (laughs) but you know they they got their bag and now they're making a blood and honey too yep classic i'm i'm guessing winnie the pooh did not die at the end of the movie uh no um i think i haven't seen it i just watch like movie reviews a lot for movies that i know i'm not gonna watch Mm -hmm. um i think piglet died of course because the only two that were actually in it were Pooh and piglet but apparently piglet's gonna be in resurrected I, i guess and i think that like it was a whole plot point that they ate eeyore which is just tragic because eeyore's the best and traumatic yeah did you know that Eeyore and Optimus Prime, same voice? No. Yeah. Did Once you, you hear it, you can't unhear it. Did, I'm going to say something that I thought was extremely obvious, but I, but I found out is not. Do you know that Eeyore is named after the sound that donkeys make? That makes a lot of sense. Eeyore. Yeah. I When I was like five, I said that. I was like, oh, his name is Eeyore, obviously, because of the sound donkeys make. Megan heard that somewhere, and she was like, that's incredible. I was like. Oh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say was... it's incredible. I would say that is a uh, good job. Mm. That's it's one of those things that like I probably should have thought of that sooner. But do you rate that as h- higher, lower, about the same as unobtainium? Um, unobtainium <laughs> is is on the ocean floor. <laughs> that's just that, that that that's cute. That's that's cute. Unobtainium is insulting. I that, saw a, it was a YouTube short of Hank Green talking about unobtainium. Hank Green. The Green, sounds- the Green Brothers. There's Hank and there's the other one whose name I'm forgetting at the moment. They uh, had something to do with VidCon and all that stuff. Okay. They're like old YouTube. Gotcha. But Name sounds familiar. They. What is Hank's brother's name? I'm blanking on it. Uh, one is like... A lit- he wrote a book, and the book had a lot of issues um, being taken out of schools and stuff, but apparently it's a good book. Um, and he's really into like, literature and English and stuff, and his brother is like a biologist who has all these science facts. What is his brother's I'm name? I'm looking it up. John Green? Maybe. 
Uh, yeah, he's a YouTuber. Yeah, they're both YouTubers. Yeah. John, I didn't think uh, John is not the name I would have picked, but that's probably who it is. I was gonna say there's a Tom Green, but I don't think that's. I've been snapping and pointing a lot lately. Can yeah. you hear it on the mic? Hold hold on. It's pathetic, but yeah, you can hear. It. It's not a pathetic. It's with my. You, you're at like actual ears in the room. It's a great snap, but in the mic, it just kind of sounds like a light thud. And that was my left hand. This is my right hand. Are you ready? Ooh, that was a good one. I have a good right hand. This snap. is a good one. Yeah, I can't do that with my left hand. Is worthless oh yeah i'm very right-handed i'm i'm like 75 percent ambidextrous mm. like when you brush your teeth you brush your teeth like the left side with your right hand and then you kind of do like the your right side of your teeth still with your right hand it's always brush on the right never switches sides you just brush the right side of your mouth or no, the left no, side no, of your mouth no, like it like the the side that the brush handle is on never switches yeah it, yeah I don't know if that's what you were asking. Yes, it is. Okay. So I brush with like, so like I'll brush with my right hand mm -hmm. and then I'll put the toothbrush in my left hand to brush the other side. Yeah. Um, no, that would, it, there, there would be a mess if I did that somehow. And like I eat with my left hand. So like the fork goes in my left hand. Yeah. No. Just a weird guy, I guess. So anyway, back to what we were saying about Disney. Yeah. It all, I think it started with a TikTok slash Instagram video where a guy was just doing a deep dive of Disney stuff. And he talks all about how there's this clause from like 1861 and stuff, blah, 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 all the things. CNBC picked it up. And so I'm looking right now at CNBC's website. Um, Sarah Witten wrote it and it's a full article. And the first line of the article, which is, fantastic says forget about disney princesses mickey mouse might have just proved who's the real king of florida that's a horrible line no yes because like i didn't hear the first part move your camera so they can see your face when you do that <laughs> i didn't hear the because you you read that line to me earlier but i didn't hear the first part forget disney princesses mickey mouse proved who's the real, real king, king of florida that's doesn't work because you could still have Disney princesses if Mickey Mouse is the king. But I think what she's saying is that Mickey Mouse is proving that King Charles the Third is the real king of Disney, right? Which is why the princesses being in that sentence don't make sense. They should have said, "Forget Disney royalty," instead mm. of Disney princesses. Or she's got a couple that. of one-liners in here. I was trying to find another one. Oh, here we go. Talk, talking about like there's it's all talk about like a board that's made and like Disney had people that back Disney on the board and then DeSantis replaced them with Republicans or whatever. Yeah. And then it says, this is a quote. While Disney remained quiet on the matter for months, it seemed the House of Mouse has been hatching a plan to retain its control over the land. Would you consider that a one liner? No, I just like House of Mouse. House of Mouse is a pretty big one. People use that a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't, I'm not a Disney guy. Yeah. It's other than that. It's, it's usually not used uh, um, in a um, endearing way. Oh, it's usually like derogatory. Not necessarily derogatory, but usually the context in which it's used is by people who are referring into it as a corporate entity rather than like the mm. beloved family. Do you? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like the. House of Gucci. Sure. Do you know what the district upon which uh, Disney is built upon is called? No. Reedy Creek District. Or Reedy Creek Improvement District. Okay. Isn't that interesting? Like they didn't, they called it like some random thing. Reedy Creek. And what do you mean by uh, the district it's built? What do you mean by that? Like the land is called know. a district. Okay. Like that, that plot of land is called Reedy Creek. Apparently that's interesting. When it was, it was established in 1967, it was created by the Florida legislature. So Disney could develop the interest infrastructure for Walt Disney world at no cost to Florida taxpayers. The arrangement has allowed Disney to build theme parks, hotels, and other tourist experiences within the Reedy Creek district with little to no oversight. The company also became the largest employer of Florida residents and helped the Orlando area become one of the largest hubs for tourism in the U S yeah. So it's called Reedy Creek or it was in 1967. 
Now it's just called Disney. Now it's just called Disney. Yeah. Disney District. Yeah. Probably a better name. Yeah, I think so. It's like a so working title for a film kind of situation. Maybe a slasher film. <laughs> is that the Reedy Creek is the uh, working maybe, title for Blood, Blood and Honey we'll 2? We'll see. We'll see. So we don't know whether it's real or fake. I think the interesting point is that what I think originated as some dude on TikTok has now people from major things, major, uh, what's the word? Publications, Publications yeah. have picked it up. And like, there's even a correction at the bottom, but it just talks about how it, it they corrected the name of the board of supervisors that controls all of it. So like, according to this, it's still a real thing. If this ever came out to where it was just like, oh, this is entirely made up. Do you think that would be a retraction at the bottom where it was just like correction? Just kidding. <laughs> this is all fake. Yeah, or would they you, just delete the article? I feel like you would just delete the article. That's that would be the responsible thing to do. Yeah. Just say or it. or to make a new article that is like, Hey, this turned out to be a fake story. Let's talk about how TikTok's a problem uh, and misinformation um is rampant. I have so in one you would have never been on this website. It's called the meat eater dot com. The meat eater is a hunting show, but it's grown in this huge publication yeah. brand. Um, and their website, they do blogs and all kinds of stuff. They had a, I never read the original article, but apparently they pulled an article and then the editor put published an article saying, Hey, this was wrong information. We basically got it completely wrong, um, because of these reasons and we value, you know, truth or whatever. And I was truth like, truth or whatever. They didn't say that, yeah. but I just thought it was interesting how not only did they pull it, but then they posted something that I'm sure is still on there where they said, look, we made a mistake. It was completely wrong. And we just said, instead of correcting yeah. it, we're just going to pull the whole article. That is the ethical thing to do. Um, I think is when a large, like w when, when pretty much an entire piece written turns out to just be false. Right. The responsible thing to do is to obviously post retraction, but, but also I think it's, it, it, it is ethical, especially in the times we live in to, make a new article about that mistake and talk about how like talk about misinformation as a whole. I think instead of retraction, they should do redaction and they should just have black yeah. lines everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Not everywhere. Just like in le certain in, in, in anything that is like a, like a proper noun. Is that what? Oh, I have no idea. Like a, like a, a named person place or thing. Yes. Yeah. Redact all of those and then leave everything else. And then the information that's incorrect. Yes. So proper nouns, Play all the incorrect information. Yeah. Basically just leave articles. A well, and, lot, and D. Lots of, yeah. <laughs> A and these. That's funny. Good. Well, I'm glad we didn't flesh that out at all or figure anything out. <laughs> but we said we were talking about another podcast. This is us talking about it. Yeah. It could be real. It could be real. It, it could be. But speaking as someone who has spent a lot of time on the internet and knows a pretty good bit of conspiracies and, and, stories that are not talked about or not known by the public um, and being fairly Disney adjacent. I feel like I would have heard about that because one, my wife loves the British Royals and she loves Disney. That seems like the perfect thing. for yeah, her. She needs to ask about that. Yeah. She needs to look into it. Yeah. Also, how does a country own a portion of another country? And that just stands. Yeah. I can't imagine. Like I can imagine taking over part of a country or something like that, but I like you have a sovereign nation, another mm -hmm. sovereign nation, and that's second sovereign nation just owns a part of the other sovereign nation. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't. But the tax exempts thing is very interesting because we saw another article that said that Disney actually does pay taxes. Mm -hmm. So who, who really knows at this point? Yeah. Probably Disney in his hyperbaric chamber. Hyper. No. What's it called when they're on ice forever? Um, cryostasis. Cry yep. Cryo. Hyperbaric. That's where there's a lot of oxygen in there. Okay. That is an actual thing. Okay. I was thinking hyperbolic. <laughs> it's a really big chamber. It's really, really yeah. nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually incredible. It's the best. Yeah. You think Trump has a hyperbolic chamber? Yeah. That would probably fit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what are, what's our main theme today? What are we, what are we working through? So, um, with this being a solo week, we usually either 
the, the way that the solo episodes, that's not how this one has happened, but the way solo episodes usually go is that we pick a recording time and we're just like, so what do we do? Um, and that's a little bit of what happened today, but I, when we decided this would be a solo episode this week, I was like, it's November. Slam dunk of a, of a topic is a Thanksgiving food tier list. Yeah, you already kind of like had a topic waiting in the wings, as they say. I, I figure... If we've got a guest lined up for every single week and potentially something to talk about with them, mm. we got to do a Thanksgiving food tier list before the month's up. So we may as well knock it out now, right? To give people a week or so to prepare. Because exactly. we, we fully assume that this will alter how you view your Thanksgiving. Absolutely. I know that everyone is waiting to, like, like maybe so, someone's, Kids are like, hey, what's for Thanksgiving this year? You know, they're looking forward to coming home from college. Yeah. And their parents are like, we don't know. Logan and Steven haven't told us yet. Mm. So we are doing you guys a service by uh, knocking this out early. If that's the case, the Christmas episode is going to be wild. <laughs> what, to get, what to get your kids for Christmas? Is that where it <laughs> Yes. Okay. That will be great. Yeah. And we'll only use like 1940s era toys. Yeah. It'll be like wooden rock. The ones horse. that you always see the elves working on in the movies at yes. Santa's Workshop. Like a like a rocking horse or like a little toy car. Rocking horse, that's the word I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, that'll be great. Like a slide whistle. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be lovely. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen an actual slide whistle. My mom bought Cash One. So guess what he did the whole time? Is just played that thing. That's brutal. Just blowing a whistle in the house she knows forever. What she did. She, she knew she, what she does. Did. She only buys things with batteries and the things that have to be put together. Is that a uh, form of revenge, you think? I think so. Yeah. Like, I'm fine with Legos. Legos are fun They're and enjoyable, best. especially when you buy the age appropriate ones. Like, Cash gets ones that are like six plus. Like the Duplo kind of. The what? Duplos. That's like the really little kid. Um, I don't. I couldn't remember if you said cash or cannon, but like no, ca- cannon will eat the Legos. Yeah, but well, Duplos are the ones that are like really big that oh, kids can't eat. They're no. still Lego brand, but oh, okay. No, we just do the normal Legos. Okay, but because it's good with cash because he can put it. What he does is we get like the ones that make like action figure type things. Like the one we just did was it was Hulk in a mech suit. Love it. Which that's a. I would love to have a conversation about why does arguably. Top three most powerful creatures in the universe need a mech suit. He, he absolutely doesn't. Um, in fact, that would just hold him back. That's probably. what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, but Lego loves to put their Marvel characters in mech suits. And it was cool. It was a fun little build. We built it in like 15 minutes. And then Cash will play with it. That's where I was getting it. He'll play with it like as an action figure. Yeah. Have you... We'll get to the tier list eventually. Have you watched Lego Masters? I know the the gist of it, but no. It's it's four seasons in. Uh, they're in the middle of the fourth season right now. It's a great time. It's it's literally like just one of those baking shows where people make crazy cakes or whatever, but it's with Legos. The part of that that I can't figure out, and it's just a creativity thing, is I have to follow the directions. Mm-hmm. And like, because it's like you put a, a gray piece here that has the hinge joint, but then you put like a little block and then a curved aesthetic block on top of it, I would just forget about the little thing in the middle. So everything just looks all clunky and stuff. And you see those guys and they just design it perfectly and they build these incredible yep. things. Yep. It's it, awesome. It is wild. The stuff they come up with. Have they had to build a, a perfect sphere? Mm. That's probably like basic for them. No, but um, they do. Um, I'm trying to think. Of. The reason why I say that, why you think, is yeah. I saw a video from a guy who worked at like the Lego store or a Lego store, and he said like to become a master builder, you have to build a sphere out of Legos. Interesting. Because like, I think there's like lots of ways that you can go yeah. about it. Yeah. One of the episodes, I think the most recent one, um, they had to uh, Will Arnett's the host. He's the voice Classic. of Lego Batman. He's great. Um, but- Did you know that? Do you know who Patrick Stump is? No. He's the lead. He's the front man of Fallout Boy. No. But he does a lot of the Disney Marvel animated shows. Really? So like Spidey and Friends, which mm-hmm. if you haven't gotten into Spidey and Friends, is a slept on animated show. 
Um, he did uh, the music for the Batman Lego movie. Oh. I was listening to Cash, or I was watching Spidey and Friends with Cash, and we were listening to the opening theme. I was like, that's so cute. They got like some knockoff guy who sounds like Fallout Boy. And like the, all their uh, their music sounds like something Fallout Boy would sing. And then I looked it up and I'm like, that's the guy. He's so, doing solo stuff for Disney. That's where Fallout Boy is now. Or it's where he is. I don't know. It's, I don't think it's the band. I think it's his solo stuff. Yeah, but I mean, if the front man's gone, then the band usually doesn't make usually, it. Usually. Yeah. But I want to know why that is. I don't know if like he just got into it because like his kids are into it, if it's something yeah. like that, or if he's like, they're going to pay me so much money to do music for Disney. If you're essentially a washed up band, which not saying Fall Out Boy was washed up or if they're like, I don't even know if they're still around, but the fact that I don't know if they're still around means that right. they, they might be a little washed they're up. They're probably in the same place as like One Republic. I don't know. One Republic. They're still putting music out? Oh yeah. And the 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 lead singer for One Republic, he's a ghost writer for so many people. Oh. Like he, he wrote, I want to say he wrote Umbrella by Rihanna. And a lot of other hits. Ella, Ella, eh, eh. Anna went and saw with it, he, Anna saw One Republic live, and he performed a lot of those songs. And it was I like One Republic; they're, they're great. Yeah. I just didn't know they were putting out new music, which I thought is where you were going with this. I, I, I think they are. Okay, because yeah, they they did um they did the, did the big song for um Top Gun last year. I think. Oh, I think that was One Republic. There you go. Yeah. Point being. If you're a washed up band or if you were like really big and you were kind of a moment for a certain generation, which I feel like is kind of where Fall Out Boy, My, My Chemical Romance, I'd probably throw them mm. uh, together. Um, if Disney comes knocking, you answer. I would think so too. Yeah, that's that's just a good opportunity. It would just be a cool story if he was like, yeah, my five-year-old was watching Spider-Man and I was like, this music sucks. I could do better. Yeah. And then I did. Yeah. That would be fun. So yeah, Will Arnett hosts Lego Masters, um, and the the episode from this past week, I guess it would be two weeks from this point. Yeah, they had to uh, go into his office, the, each individual team, and pick an item from the office and recreate it out of Lego. Mm. Um, and I would have done his desk chair. That's what one team did, and the they learned after they picked the items, like halfway through the build that part of the challenge was that someone was going to come in and see if they could identify from a certain point what was Lego and what wasn't. Oh, that's not good then. No, they, they were like, this is going to get spotted immediately. Yeah. Um, and it was a good, re, uh, good build. Um, it was to scale and, and it's this, it's it, the, that team is one of the best cause they're a couple of friends that are like entrepreneurs. And uh -huh. so like they talk like each build is them pitching a new startup uh -huh. essentially and so they're a lot of fun um but they but there's no way you make legos look like a leather chair no and especially when it was kind of like a darker red and they went with a bright uh -huh. ronald mcdonald red because it's lego what are you gonna <laughs> yeah. do but the best part of that was um there was one team it's this guy and his mom and they've been crushing it all season they picked the rug underneath the desk and it, I don't remember how big they said they said it was, but it was it was huge. And they uh, after picking it, they were like, "This was a stupid idea. We can't make this to scale." <laughs> <laughs> so they did like slightly smaller, but it was so funny because like it looked pretty good. Uh -huh. um, but um, the the brick masters is what they call the judges were like, it isn't quite to scale, and not a lot of the de not a lot of the finer details are in there. When they brought in the special guest to identify what was made of Lego, she didn't look down. Uh, and so everybody's over there just like, like, <laughs> she doesn't see the rug. <laughs> and so she only identified two things that were made of Lego. And um, one of them was the chair, but it still took her like 40 seconds to see the chair. Um, and so she, maybe she never identified the rug. So maybe the quality of the judge was not as good no well the funny thing is she was the winner of last season so she's like a lego expert isn't that funny and like, she couldn't tell what was a lego no, and not a lego no. <laughs> well she was standing from like 20 feet away oh okay she wouldn't like walk she wouldn't walk around no oh but well. but it was just so funny because like everyone's just in the room behind her just like <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing and and eventually will was like there's one more thing in this room 
uh, there's there, there, like just guess. There's one item in here. There was one more, and she was like, "Oh!" <laughs> like oh, she saw the rug. Yeah, she, she looked down and was like, "Cause it's shiny plastic bricks <laughs> <laughs> underneath the desk." <laughs> but it was it was great. It's a fun show. It's a great family show. It's pretty funny. Um. So yeah, Thanksgiving food tier list. Yeah, I yeah I could have gone longer about Legos, but that's fine. Let's I love Legos. It. I grew up on Le- that was my thing as a kid. Let's go into it. Great. Did you ever make the Millennium Falcon? I could never afford it. Yeah, that was that was how you knew you had a good childhood is if you had a Lego Millennium Falcon or the what was it Death Star? Oh man, if you had the Death Star, you were the envy of everyone. Yeah, that, I, I, I that, built a lot of Star Wars Legos. That looked like it just took forever to yeah. build. They just and uh, it's all gray. <laughs> the whole thing it's like having just an all black puzzle yes just what do you even do um but i did build a lot of star wars legos they did just come out with whatever the precursor of a star destroyer is i want to say it's like a v- v- venator class starship the one from the mercedes pre- the yeah mercedes benz they came out with the star wars mercedes benz um no uh Whatever the starships were in the prequels mm. that predated the Star Destroyer, like the the triangle ships, yep. they released that, and it's massive. Um, Interesting. I think it might be the new biggest build. I built the only one of those that I ever, because we weren't super into Legos, but I did build the, what was the little racer that like little kid Luke Skywalker raced in the movie? Okay. Or was that Anakin? Um, talking about the, the pod racer? Sure. Yeah. The, like the, the, like the, right the, off the ground, there was the race. There, yeah, the cockpit with the two uh-huh. engines. Yeah, that's a pod racer, and that was Anakin Skywalker. Bam. See. Yeah, you missed it the first time, but you got there. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of the <coughs> movies. It's just because, like, because I don't care about the series really at all. Yeah. But I was like, that was a cool scene. Yeah, and even people who hate the prequels can't deny that pod racing was just rad. That was super cool. It was super cool, and the sound design was immaculate because it was Fast and the Furious, but way better. Yeah. There's one scene. From, 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 from that, like something, something that I I thought of semi somewhat recently when talking to Tyler Holden was just how Shout out. how many people die in the pot race? They scene. all explode. Yeah, and there's one that's just this little. It, it, there's a YouTube video um, version of this called Crazy Frog Dies. And it's just this little frog man that's in the pod race scene and he like looks for it and then he goes, ah, and yeah. then just hits a wall and explodes. Yes. So many people, so, so many. And they let aliens. a little 11 year old yeah. <laughs> race in that. Yeah. And he's having the time of his life and everyone's dying. He's just like, this, this is pod racing. This is great. And then. Doesn't he have, what's his face in the back with him too? Uh, RGD2. Or yeah. That thought, was, that was later in the movie. No, I thought it was like, uh, what's the big gold robot? C-3PO. He's, I thought he was in that. No. C-3PO's the, never done anything. <laughs> well, I knew that. Yeah. Uh, he made C-3PO. Right. Um, Which you, is another wild concept. Yes. You may be thinking of when Anakin went into the cockpit of a Naboo in one starfighter. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's the yellow starfighter that also has kind of the engines and then a long tail in the back. And he was part of the space battle at the in the climax of episode one. R2 was with him there. I knew that. And that's when he yells, this is pod racing. I don't remember that line at all. Yeah. It was, it's the a, first pod racing when he was a little kid was super cool. Yeah, it was. It was a great game, too. Didn't remember the Starfighter X7-11. The N1, the N1 Starfighter was my favorite as a kid. I don't know why. Was, I just I just loved it. I, I did make that set. Are you looking it up? Yeah, I don't. I have no You'll rec- You'll recognize it when you see it. I think whoever designed... If I, if I remember this in editing, I'll put a picture... Um, and I may show Crazy Frog. Say it guy. again. In one. Uh, in one. In dash one Starfighter. It was the second thing that came up. Uh, you would be incorrect. I do not recognize this at all. Really? The yellow with the silver in front? Hold on one second. It's not loading. I'll make sure the podcast sees it. And they'll, they'll know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That was the in. Because you know every... Guess what this forum is called? What Wikipedia? That's their version of Wikipedia. It's great, fantastic. Um, so, in you know, every Star Wars movie pretty much has to have a, a space battle climax. Otherwise, it's not. It shouldn't be called Star Wars, exactly. in my opinion. Exactly. That is the standard starfighter of the Royal Naboo, which is the Naboo is the planet where all the 
big drama happens in episode one. That's their that design. You can't see it, but I'm looking at the one uh, on the right, Sebulba's. Yeah, the I main mean, the main picture here. Yeah the 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 one with the that looks like a greater than and less than sign. Yes, that's Sebulba. But the come on now, and I zoomed in. I need you to move over. I'm telling you, Star Wars. No, but whoever just designed, like. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Whoever designed like the, like the Tesla beams coming in between them, yeah. and like the motors are just hanging out for that's just a cool design. It, it really is. It's very creative. Um, I'm I am one of the people that will defend the Star Wars prequels because, in my opinion, they. You will oh. not defend the new ones that came out. Absolutely not. Those were horrible. Um. Like as a film, you could argue that the new ones were, I guess, better because the dialogue was more tight and the cinematography and CGI, whatever, holds up more. Mm-hmm. But you, you like the, the the prequels added so much to the mythos of Star Wars, and the story was great. Yeah, look at this picture of little little boy Anakin. Yeah, he was like eight. Like he left kindergarten to go to a pod race. Eight-year-olds are in kindergarten. And his well, he probably got held back. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he was a slave. Yeah. So, and uh, his mom's like, "Hey, man, go have a good time." Yeah. I mean, she looks a little upset, but like, yeah. crazy. Yeah. Why aren't your kids pod racing? Why aren't your kids doing dirt track racing? Peter knows where his nose is now. Hey, that's I, always fun. Yeah, I asked him this morning because apparently uh, Kathy yeah. taught him. Shout out Kathy, teaching my son all the stuff. Yeah. But I was like, "Where's your nose?" And he was like. Mm-hmm. They get so pumped. Yeah. The, and then I was like, where's your ear? And he went. <laughs> yeah. The best part is where you say, where's your eye? And they just poke themselves in the eye yeah. and they just do the. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Because eventually they learn just to point at it and not like, oh, I have to touch it. Yeah. Thanksgiving tier list. Cool. Um, so I didn't make this. I was going to make this yesterday and then I didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, so I decided part of the fun of this is finding someone else's tier list. And then making do. Yeah. And making do. Um, so I looked through a lot. I scoured the internet, one might say, for the most fitting Thanksgiving food tier list. This one's pretty okay. But something I did something I did notice in like three different ones mm-hmm. that were just food items, the Detroit Lions were on there. Like just the logo for the Detroit Lions. So you're saying Michiganians really like Thanksgiving. I guess. They really like Thanksgiving and they really like making tier lists or yeah. somebody did that once and then their tier list got copied. Yeah. So, I, don't know. I could also see it. One super fan is like really into making tier lists yeah. and he just throws that in on every tier list. Yeah. So like, we're going to find one that's like pick a rant, the most random thing you can think of. Pickles. There's going to be a pickle tier list with the Detroit, Detroit lines. Go lines. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so what are we doing? We're doing uh Thanksgiving food tier list. Do you want me to go and fire it on the screen? Yeah, let's throw it on the screen. All right. Well, l- uh, let me, um, get this situated so you can be I'll, in the shot as well. I'll distract while you're doing it. Great distraction. <laughs> yep. There we go. All right. We were, uh, black screen for a second, but we're here now. So, um, this tier list, I, the only thing I, I changed was the, um, the rankings uh-huh. because they initially had just like S A B D F. And I was like, let's, let's make this a little more interesting. C. Well, yeah, let's add a C in there. No, you I, said S A B D F. I don't, it, it was, it was less than normal. Did you think the lighter wouldn't work? No, I did. They have no context for that. Yeah. I picked up Chris's lighter that he gave us for his episode and I yeah, hit it again. Very good. Okay. So, uh, the rankings are S tier is fill the plate, which is the thought being, um, you could eat an entire plate worth of that food. I have some that would be on that. Yes. Uh, a tier is getting seconds, which I think is good for an A tier because I mean, for Thanksgiving, um, 
if you're like me, you're basically starving yourself until mm. the meal so you can just absolutely tear it up. So we used to be like that, yeah. except now we're not because Megan's family, which I'm not upset about this. Don't hear, don't hear this as me being upset. They will go watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade in the mornings. We do that as well. And there are buckets of sausage balls that are made for that. I love sausage balls. They're so good. Yeah. Um, shout out Jessica Van Hooser makes fantastic sausage balls, hmm. like high quality. Good you know, because there's some people you like, you make them. You're like, yeah, this is good. Yeah. You eat Jessica Van Hooser, and they rival Jenny H. Jennifer Hall's, which is my mother-in-law. Her sausage balls. Yeah, they're very good. I'm, I don't think I've ever had a bad sausage ball. You can have them that are too dry and crumbly. Yeah. Where they just kind of fall apart. And it's mainly the dry, but the way that you uh, remedy that is you just put jelly on them. And if you put jelly on a sausage ball, it fixes everything. I never would have thought to do that, but that makes a lot of sense, like sitting here thinking about it. What is what is like your go-to jelly flavor? Strawberry. Yeah, strawberry is the key for a sausage ball. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you can just put a little, it's not even a dollop, it's just a little yeah. mini dollop on there and it, because it, it, I mean, it takes makes sense. all like a, the dryness out of the sausage ball. Yeah. Because a really good sausage ball, the fat from the uh, cheese and the sausage kind of moisten the sauce, the, the biscuit part. Mm -hmm. And it's, and that's what makes it good. And it makes it not crumbly and stuff. But yeah. um, even if you have a dry, crumbly one, you just shower it with jelly. And it yeah. makes it it makes it makes fantastic. Hmm. Good to know. So, okay. So, Anyway, getting seconds is a tier. Uh, there we go. Uh, B tier is great. Like it's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, C is not bad. Um, which to me would be something like, like a green bean casserole, like, oh. like something that I'm going to put on my plate and it's going to be good, but like, I'm not going to be talking to anybody. Yeah. Like mm, that. And I'm, I'd say green bean, not to disc green bean casserole, but it's just like a mid of, middle of the road kind of. What are you going to do when I say that green bean casserole is S tier? Uh, call it's, you a liar. It's not, by the way. Yeah, I know it's not. Um, D tier, and this is where we get past the point of having like. Yeah, it's not good. If it's D tier, it's not good. Well, this, I added this one before what we would call D tier. Let's call this a C minus. Okay. Might try. Uh, I, feel like, I feel like you need that. Yeah. Some, something that you, that you could think about it. Um, and you're like, yeah, I'll put a little bit of that on the plate. Yeah. Somebody tried to get a little crazy. They brought it out for everybody and you're like, all right, yeah, we'll, give, we'll see. Give how it a shot. Goes. Uh, D tier is hard pass. You know that you will not like it and you, you respectfully decline. Yes. Uh, F tier is if that touches my plate, Christmas is canceled. Mm. And you asked Christmas or Thanksgiving. And I said Christmas because Thanksgiving's happening. Yeah. Currently. You can't cancel it if it's. You, know. you can cancel next year's, but whatever. Yeah, it's yeah fine. But Christmas is the next thing. It, it Are we doing time. this based off of like, what's our order? Is it like courses or is it just a random assortment of things? It is a random assortment. It, it. it is It is in no particular order. When I saw it, this does not contain drinks. It does contain a lot of dessert. Which is fantastic. Yes. Um, the, I, I tried to find one that was less... Um, yeah, I tried to find that one that was less any possible version of a Thanksgiving f food. Mm -hmm. and I tried to find one that was, a, a, for the most part, like kind of exhaustive, but also um, realistic that you would find all of these at a individual yeah. Thanksgiving meal. I need to tell you something that's going to affect how I view this list. Okay. I have become unapologetic about the fact of, A, I don't love Thanksgiving dinner meals. The reason for that is I hate ham. Yeah. Ham is disgusting, especially as the main course, like the main meat dish. And turkey is okay, but I get so tired of turkey. And we're about to get into the season where we eat turkeys all the time. Yep. Because you go to multiple Thanksgivings, you have turkey. Then you have a week's worth of leftover turkey. Yep. And then you go straight into Christmas. And what do they do for Christmas? Turkey and ham. And you're just like, and it's also worth noting that my family growing up, I think we just didn't like turkey that much. So we would do like shish kebabs for Christmas. We would do all kinds. We usually did turkey for like the extended family Thanksgiving. But then anytime else, it was like 
I, we would have steak for like our like our immediate family Thanksgiving and stuff. Yeah. Um, the way we've done it at my at, with with my family um, is, is turkey for Thanksgiving, ham for Christmas. Mm. The holiday ham, as they say. Yes. Um, but now that my dad's got gotten really into like smoking meats and yeah. and going crazy with all that stuff, I wonder if he's got something planned for. He should. He's been spatchcocking turkey for a couple yeah. of years now, and that's the way to go. It's so much better. It is. Um, but yeah, uh, who knows? Maybe we'll do something special for Christmas. But the last part I was going to say because I, I forgot that I was going to say this. Yeah, I'm unapologetic about like if I because it for Thanksgiving I'm eating what I want to eat. Yeah. If you bring in a thirty food spread. I'm eating what I want to eat. You know, yeah. some people are like, oh, because Aunt Betty brought this. I have to put a scoop. Yeah. I'm, that was me. It's not me anymore. No, that's not If I don't me. like it, I don't like it. So I'm going to either have things very much towards the top or it's going to be very much towards the bottom. I don't think I'm going to have a lot in the middle. Yeah. I I never really had Thanksgivings like that where um, even as a kid, uh, well, that's not true. I did have Thanksgivings when I was a kid where we would do like, extended family and everything. Mm -hmm. But that was back in Kentucky. And that was with my Italian grandmother who the way they did th the way I remember them doing things. Meatballs. No, no, oh. she, she, she did a good like traditional American Thanksgiving, but she was such a good cook that she did most of the cooking. And mm -hmm. so like nothing she made was bad. Right. And so the occasional relative would bring like a dessert or a side dish, but I don't ever remember like a moment where, I had that like, oh, be be nice to your aunt. She brought uh, this special yeah. thing. No, we we ate good. We ate real good. Nick Wilson, we need to remember to bring this up. He said something that's hilarious. He's like, Thanksgiving is the day where you spend ten hours cooking so that your kids can eat rolls. That's so true. And I was like, that's good. I like that. All right, let's get started. Okay. Let's go back. All right, so we're not going to be as secretive about the categories this time because yeah. we're not hiding chicken pox in this yes. tier list. Uh, so we're going to start, and and we're just going to throw into the not bad tier for our staging area at first until unless it gets crowded. Then, Perfect. Yeah. Baked potato. Uh, I love a baked potato. I don't know if I've ever eaten a baked potato for a Thanksgiving meal. Yeah. Um. So again, this is this is in the context of. A Thanksgiving meal. This is not the, you know, the context of like, right? Just like what's how good. do I feel about baked potatoes? It's how do I feel about I baked potatoes when I've got all of this other stuff? I don't know how I feel about a baked potato for Thanksgiving. Like, I think it's a hard pass for me for Thanksgiving. I'm so much more of like a mashed, potatoes. mashed potato. Absolutely, that's how I am. Re just because we're right in the middle of it, or we're at the beginning. Read me through the the grades. Fill the plate. You know, Can you fill, imagine fill if the I plate with fill your the plate with of baked, baked potatoes? potatoes. <laughs> Wild. Uh, and and since since this tier list, um, you're only getting. Well, I, I I'm pretty sure baked potato is only on here once. Like it's not baked potato and then loaded baked potato. Uh huh. We, we can say it's baked potato prepared. Let's be honest. If I'm eating a baked potato, it's loaded. Absolutely. Um. So, our 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 rank, grades rank, rankings, whatever the word is, fill the plate, getting seconds. Great, not bad, might try, hard pass. If that touches my plate, Christmas is canceled. I'm, I'm going to go with. I'm thinking hard pass. I'm going not bad. Okay. All right, so it stays. Because it's not might try, because I like a baked potato. So it's not like I'm might trying it. Yeah. Yeah. But I can see where you said hard pass because it's like you've only got one plate. Are you putting a potato on it? You've only got one stomach. So, like, are you going to waste that room scroll down just so i can see how many foods there are hard pass <laughs> there's too much yeah that's what i'm saying and like, we are but we are talking about dessert and a dessert plate is different than an entree plate correct so that will tie in a little bit we yeah. may move baked potato up but right now it's a hard pass this this, this this tier list is deceptively strategic okay i'm ready next um, just because you have to consider plate size and yep am i really going to waste my stomach on this. My grapes. Yeah. All right. Roasted vegetables. Ooh. My, my initial try. thought is might try. Yeah. Um, if I, if you like have, have roasted broccoli really well. Yeah. And it looks appetizing. I might throw a little bit on there. 
Yeah. But like Thanksgiving is not a vegetable day for me. Yeah, I agree. My vegetable is sweet potato. Yeah. If I see some vegetables on there that I like, um, I'll throw a little on there. Maybe mm-hmm. some carrot um, and whatever else that is. Yeah, I'll, I'll, might try. Might try. I Next. Think that's, yeah. I'm not spending time with vegetable <laughs> on a Thanksgiving list. Here's an interesting one. Biscuits. I've never heard of biscuits on Thanksgiving. Never. Yeah. And, and I do know there are th- at least three different bread options on this list. That's so, a, for so, Thanksgiving, that's a hard pass for me. I'm going to say might try just because. Turkey biscuit. Turkey biscuit or, or something like that. The biscuit might pair well with something else that's on this What if you did biscuits bread. and gravy, but you used like the turkey. The, the brown gravy? Yeah. Okay, it's moving up for me now. Now I'm getting interested. The might try or not bad? It's still a might try okay. because I'm I'm if there's if it's like biscuit, cornbread, and toast or something. It's biscuit, cornbread, and roll. I believe is what the three are. Like I'm going roll. Yeah. So the roll for me is the top tier, yeah, but I, I might try a biscuit. I think I would try try a biscuit, but I'd pass on the cornbread. Cornbread's an interesting Thanksgiving take too. Of course, there's yeah. cornbread dressing, but to me those are two. See, the cornbread dressing I will destroy. But that. those are two different things. Absolutely. Okay. So might try. That for now, we yeah. may move it, but for yeah. now. Mashed potatoes. S tier. Nah. It, it's it's a getting seconds probably because this is interestingly enough they separated mashed potatoes and the gravy. Those are two separate items. Yeah, because you put gravy on everything. That's there. true. I, I would say getting seconds on the mashed potatoes. I'll I'll allow you to do that. It's pretty. It's in between for me. Yeah. Because we put an absurd amount of mashed potatoes on our plates. Yeah. I, th- I think that's Joel, kind of the foundation by which you put food on top of. Absolutely. It goes with everything. Brussels sprouts. Hard uh, pass for me. For me, it's a. I'm not coming back. I hate Brussels sprouts. Right, Brussels I'm sprouts. Fine with, if that touches my plate, Christmas is canceled. Brussels sprouts are mini cabbages, and I hate cabbage. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with putting that down. There. Yeah. So it's it's F tier for me. F tier, great. I'm very glad that we already have something in F tier. That's fantastic. Brown gravy. Honestly, I so, might say S tier. It's S tier because, because you're filling you're, your plate anything. Anyway. You're, you're filling your plate up, but then you're pouring gravy on all of it. Yeah. So it is filling a plate regardless. Yes. Yeah. S tier brown gravy. Excellent. We're flying through this. All right, uh, turkey. So it's it has to be at least B tier because I'll leave it at great. That's fine. Okay. Um, turkey I would probably, is not bad. Yeah. My only issue with turkey is that I get tired of turkey. Yeah. Uh, I would argue that again, ranking this as a Thanksgiving meal. When Thanksgiving hits, by that time, you're not tired of turkey yet. Exactly. That's and it's what, like peak turkey That's what time. I was saying. Yeah. A Christmas turkey, I get, I, I'm not eating turkey at Christmas. Yeah. I'll eat something else. But a Thanksgiving turkey, I'm fine. Is it with great? That's our B tier? B tier is great. I would say either B or A tier. Because I'll, I'll probably, because the way I'd probably do it is I'd probably get, you know, a, a even spread for my first plate. Um, and then for my second attempt, I, I know what was good, but I may also throw a little bit of an experiment in there. So if we are talking like the, the turkey biscuit, that's when I'll like, I'm, implement I'm a really turkey. interested in a turkey biscuit. Yeah. So I would say probably getting seconds cause the turkey is going to be implemented in some kind of experiment on plate too. Mm. So I like it where it is personally. Okay. Let's leave it at great. Okay. Candied yams. I don't know if I have an opinion on this. Yeah, I'm kind of iffy. I'm. I would rather do sweet, a straight up sweet potato or sweet potato casserole. I'm not a huge yeah. candied yam guy. Now, would, would we say it's a might try just for the sake of? Yeah, I probably might try that. Okay. I'm surprised so many are going into might try, but I'm not. Yeah, I, biscuit might go up by the time this is done, right? Because. The 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 more that goes into my try the the it differentiates itself. Yeah. Peach cobbler. So here's a hot here's a hot take. Okay, hold I on. go. I don't like cobblers, like across the board because I don't like hot fruit. That that's understandable. So you not don't like pies like, either. No, like not really. Okay. I really don't like. I like a pecan pie or like a chocolate pie. I don't like hot fruit. Yeah. I understand that take because because I feel that way a bit as well, but it's it's less that like 
I don't mind it. Mm-hmm. Like I, I like a good slice of apple pie, but at the same time, I'm never like. What super did you say st- that people do at McDonald's with their apple pies? They don't do this at McDonald's. This is something that people do. I don't know how McDonald's got ripped into this. Because McDonald's has an apple pie. Like I'm talking like straight apple pie. Uh, like what do they do? A slice of cheddar on top. That's so crazy. It is, and I hate it. But have you a, had it? Have you tried it? No, but I know that it's. I know that it's gross. But maybe you should try it because you like apple pie. But cheddar cheese <laughs> is such a strong, sharp, as they say. It's it's yes. It, it is a choice. Yeah. It is not a cheese that I think. When you're not expecting a cheese flavor, I don't think cheddar is the one that you want to get. That's true. I I don't feel like I should. I feel like this should be your take because I just don't like a cobbler. Now, my roommate who loves Pokemon is <coughs> Dylan. His favorite dessert are cobblers. Like he loves a peach cobbler. Yeah. So I feel like this should be where you want it to be because it's not fair. Because for me, it's a hard pass, yeah. but I don't feel like that's a fair shake. It's just because I don't like it. Yeah, I would probably say it's a not bad, because, like I said, with um, with like pies and cobblers, like hot fruits, they're I don't think I've ever had like a bad one, mm. but I'm never like if there's a full spread of desserts, like if there's like a chocolate pie or, or, or I love chocolate pie. Yeah, if there's anything like that, I'm not gonna reach for. I heard pie. someone talk about on a on a. Maybe it was a podcast or a video. Peanut butter pie. Mm-hmm. I've never had that. I love peanut butter, and I'm like, I love peanut butter so much. So yeah. I think I'm gonna do an apple pie. I'm thinking I'm starting to really grow on this biscuit thing. I think I may <laughs> make biscuits for Thanksgiving. Do it. Let me know how it happens. How I do have it. a homemade biscuit recipe. This shows how big of a white girl I am. Absolutely. It's uh, Joanna Gaines' recipe <laughs> from her cookbook. She yeah. makes. She has a biscuit recipe, and it's very good. Um. Do that. Make biscuits for, uh, I almost said Halloween. Do biscuits for Thanksgiving and report back to me. Try them with everything on the spread. I think I want to make biscuits and gravy. But I'll, instead of sausage, you do turkey and then you use yeah. the brown gravy for yeah. the gravy. That sounds, I'm a big biscuits and gravy guy. We know that. That sounds immaculate. The turkey's kind of my my wild card. Yeah. Cause gravy and a biscuit's going to be good. Whether it's white, brown, red, doesn't matter. I am curious how, how that would like the flavor profile of that. Cause I'm, I'm trying to think like, cause Turkey need a certain kind of biscuit. And what would that be? If, it, if you did need a certain kind of biscuit, I don't, I don't know. The, the Magnolia biscuits that I make are, they're almost like fancy biscuits. Like I'm trying to ex- like, not like when you go to Primo's and you get that big hard biscuit, yeah, which is probably really good for a gravy because the gravy softens it. Yeah, this is less like that. This is more like if you went to like a fancy restaurant and got a biscuit, it's like a big, soft, kind of salty biscuit. Okay, it's interesting. Yeah, but I like it so much. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about that. I may ask for biscuits as well, but my mom would. Since there's already so much, she'd probably just throw in some Pillsbury and yeah. The... I may make I may make those for like another episode. We'll bring them in and please please try. do that. That'd be great. Okay, moving on. Moving on from cobbler. Yeah, from cobbler. Corn on the cob. It's kind of like a baked potato for me. I really like corn on the cob. I don't know if I've ever had it at a Thanksgiving. So, for me personally. Kind of like your thing with with cobblers. I think something happened to me as a child (laughs) that made me have just a huge aversion to corn. Interesting. Yeah. So I just don't do corn. You the part that you miss out on is street corn, like Mexican street corn, not like the stuff you got at the cafeteria. You didn't get it at the cafeteria. Yeah. They used to make like Mexican street corn, which comes out of a can. And really it's just corn with little bits of like red pepper in it or like bell pepper. Yeah. That's fine. But like awful to me. If you go to Chili's, it, they make more real. Obviously you can go to a Mexican place and get like real authentic. Yeah. But Chili's has a good one where you put Mexican spices. Some people put paprika. Some people put a mix of things on it. 
And then you have uh, crema, which is kind of like a sour cream mayo concoction. And it's yeah. it's like an ale. It's like a Mexican aioli of sorts. Okay. And it's really nice. But if you don't like corn, you wouldn't like it. Yeah. But I, I, it's I really understand. Good. I understand that that's just a me thing, but yeah. It's probably going to go for me where baked potato is, which is where? Hard pass. Oh. Mm. Not bad? Probably not bad. Okay. It may go down. I'm okay. not sure yet. Because I don't know. That's a lot of space on your plate. It a is. full corn on the cob is like a quarter of your plate. It is, but it's also something you can kind of maybe stick on a napkin to the side. That's true. And that's just true. have it there. Yeah. Kind of so, pick at it as you see yeah. fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad. We'll just leave it on not bad. Okay. Cornbread. Um, this is gonna have to go below biscuit for me. So if biscuit is currently, it might try. Cornbread's probably a hard pass. I love cornbread. Cor- I love cornbread. Yes. I'm not eating a, a slice of cornbread at Thanksgiving. Yeah, I love cornbread too. But there, there for me, cornbread is either really good or a a, a, a big miss. So. Yeah, I have a lot. We could have a whole side episode on cornbread. Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's a YouTube channel called Babish. Oh yeah, I know Babish. Um, he does. He has an old episode on cornbread that gave language to me for how I feel about cornbread. Mm-hmm. And it's flour versus no flour. Okay. And if you like really sweet cornbread or like white cornbread that tastes like cake, mm-hmm. which apparently is very popular, like in the northern states. Yeah. You like a lot of flour because you're basically eating like you're basically eating like white bread with some cornmeal to kind of give it some grittiness. Yeah. I'm the opposite. And I like no flour. I like a hundred percent cornmeal. And that's like when you have it in the cast iron skillet and it's really flaky and you get crispy edges and all that. It takes a lot of Crisco or butter. What would you say like a corn muffin would be? The It would be more a cake. Yeah. Okay. Because I, th- I think that's probably more where I would lean. And that's probably in the middle, but more towards... There is flour in a corn muffin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like if I... You would... I'm trying to think of a place that makes my style of cornbread that I really like. But like Megan's opposite. Megan likes... Like if you buy a cornbread mix, it's going to have flour in it. Yeah. I don't like that. I buy cornmeal and make my own. Yeah. And I just put some baking powder, some baking soda in it to get let it rise a little bit. Yeah. And then I just fry it in butter on a cast iron skillet and then stick it in the oven. Yeah. So while, while we're on that topic, my brother uh, clued me in on a recipe for um, dough that, that uh, we used when he visited back in April. We used to make uh, calzones and pizza. Oh. It's two ingredients. It was just flour and Greek yogurt. So it's like a high protein dough. Interesting. It was very good. Makes great. It's it's a very thick bread, mm-hmm. but um, I tend to like thicker bread. And for like a um, like a calzone and and pizza, it was it was really good. I'm gonna have to look into it. Yeah, it's it's like one cup uh, yogurt to one half cup flour or something like that. One and a half cup or a half cup. One half. Okay. One and a half. Sorry. It's something it, it's, it, I can't remember which one's which it's probably important, but um, yes. yeah, it's one and one and a half. Got it. So where do calzones fit on our Thanksgiving list? If a calzone is offered to me in any situation, it's, you're eating it. I'm eating it. I love a calzone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, corn on the cob. Is that what no cornbread? Cornbread. Hard pass for Thanksgiving. going to be a hard pass yeah. for Thanksgiving. All right. It makes me sad. Cream corn. Cream corn's pretty high for me for a certain reason. Why is that? I make it's there's a dish called succotash. And I don't make it the like the real way you're supposed to make it, but I make it my way. Yeah. And it's the way that my dad's taught me, which he doesn't even cook, which is hilarious. But it's where you take cream corn, lima beans, and any other kind of bean, vegetable, pea, not peas, peas doesn't fit. What I'll do is I'll do what I'll do is what I'll do. I'll do cream corn, lima beans, and then like a black eyed pea or a filled pea. Mm-hmm. And you just whip it all up in a big pot. Or if you're at a normal person's place and they just have all this separately, that all goes mixed in together. 
and it's this this mash because the cream corn kind of makes it all mushy Mm -hmm. and it's wonderful sounds like baby food like what baby food sounds like pureed vegetable but it's not pureed it's like you have full kernels of corn and full kernels that's almost worse (laughs) yeah well i'm realizing you don't like cream (laughs) corn so yeah Yeah. for for me cream corn would be um somewhere between d and f but i fully acknowledge that that's my bias so i'm gonna let you place cream corn where's it at right now i just dropped it in hard pass for staging purposes it's either not bad bordering on great for me okay uh wait so where's not bad not bad is c tier great leave it at c tier c tier because it's a it's on par with corn cob yeah it's part of a whole for me i wouldn't just eat a big plate of cream corn yeah but i would if i had succotash i would eat it yeah a lot all right white gravy so Mm. for me that's that's probably a hard pass white gravy what are you eating white gravy with at a thanksgiving meal i think the thought pro the thought for that is probably more so is it white gravy or is it like uh giblet gravy giblet giblet it's giblet giblet um that no this appears to be like a pure, like what you would think of, like with sausage gravy, like biscuits yeah, and gravy. That's a hard pass for me. Yeah, I I agree because I don't know what you put it on. Yeah, maybe and your if you've mashed got, potatoes. If you've got brown gravy, put the brown gravy on the mashed potatoes. I know, but, but I'm yeah. just trying to think of what you would do. I don't know. Maybe with maybe the biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, but it doesn't even seem to have sausage in it, so it just seems like it's just flour and yeah, oil. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. N- no thanks. Green bean casserole. Like, I, I, I think probably a C tier. Probably C. My family loves green, t- green bean casserole. Yeah. Um, Maddie, Megan's sister, really only likes the little uh, French onion onion strips that go on top. Yep. That's the only, she doesn't even eat the green beans. She just gets it, then eats a little. I'm like, you can just go buy a can of that yeah, stuff and I just know, eat it. I know people like that. Um, it's probably C tier. Yeah. Depending on who makes it, I don't like a lot of onion. I'm not a huge onion guy. Mm-hmm. I'll eat the little fried strips because those are barely onions. Yes. But um, some people put onions in their green bean casserole, and I'm not a huge fan of that. Yeah, I, I think it has a lot to do with preparation. But I, I think if I see a green bean casserole, which I think is the epitome of, of C tier. Um, it's the, Yeah, it's either C tier at, at worst and might try. Yeah, like I, I think if I see a green bean casserole, I'm going to put at least a little bit on my plate mm-hmm. to try it. So that's that's a C tier. I'm fine with that. Okay. Not a lot of S tiers or A tiers so far. Yeah, um, which is interesting. Some of these are probably gonna have to move up. Mm. Um, honey baked ham. <laughs> you know how I feel. So I'm gonna say hard pass. Not if that touches my plate, I'm ruining um, <laughs> canceling Christmas. Um, I figured you'd want it to be higher. You like ham, but it's Thanksgiving. Oh, you're a Christmas ham guy. I'm a Christmas ham guy. Oh. I, I I like him, but that's gonna people are gonna thanks. lose their minds. We have what I have found from working here. We have ham freaks at this church. That's interesting. That are like I love ham all day, which you know, ham is ham is fine. Now ham is good. Here's what I'll say. I hate ham. Yeah, you made that. You okay. walked you walked in the door of this church, and you said. Hi, my name is Logan Elsey. I hate ham. So I love for, Jesus. For, for the record, <laughs> it was it probably was our first Christmas. It was. No, it wasn't because I was here for Phil's last Christmas. So he would he did his. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. He did his like uh, the thing where he would memorize a whole soliloquy and yeah. do stuff, which was great. Yeah. It was my second Christmas. Should make a DVD box set of all of those and try to sell. Wouldn't them. that be something? Yeah. So my second Christmas, we didn't have a pastor the whole staff kind of handled Christmas and it ended up being kind of like an interview thing where people asked questions like what's your favorite Christmas memory or what's your favorite thing about Christmas or whatever. Yeah. I got volunteered to ask the questions on stage and then they never let me on stage again. Looky there. Maybe that meant something. (laughs) Um, but I can't remember what it was, but basically I just took that moment to be like, I hate the fact that we eat ham for holidays. Yeah. You made a stance. It's not good. And people like were freaked out. They booed me. Like <laughs> I had to meet with people afterwards that were like, look, we have serious concern about the fact that you don't like ham. And yeah. I'm like, it's terrible. I don't like ham. That being said, 
what I do like, and it's something that my dad does, is leftover ham, like cold, kind of nasty. It's in the bag, like a Ziploc bag at home. He will fry ham, mm-hmm. and that's the only way that I'll eat ham. Fried ham. So you, you have like a spiral sliced ham. Yeah. And when you get done, you throw it in the fridge. You have it all sliced up. Yep. You take a skillet. You put it on there. You really don't even have to put like an oil or butter or anything like that. Maybe I will do the smallest amount of olive oil or something just so that it doesn't stick. And I will slap a, a couple pieces of ham. And it's almost like bacon. Those yeah. little bits of fat will will shrink. Will, uh, what's the word? Kind of shrink shrivel. up. Shrivel. shrivel. And it gets a nice little crust on it. And because it's spiral sliced, it's really thin. Yeah. It's nice. Hmm. And like, I cook it like bacon. I mean, like yeah. I, I, it gets yeah, I was going to ask you if you were a bacon person. It gets pretty, I do like bacon a yeah. lot. Um, I like other pieces of pork. It's something about ham. Yeah. I'm just like, why are we doing this? Yeah. Ham, like, ham to me is fine. I don't like ham sandwiches. I don't think it's good. I, I, I think ham usually is the most, as the kids would say, mid protein. Yes. It's, it, I, I've had few bad experiences with ham. Only thing below ham is bologna. Yeah. Well, tuna. Oh, that's right. I hate tuna. Yeah. Megan loves tuna fish. Yeah. I, ham's fine. So where would we put it at? Hard pass? I'm going to say hard pass just for the context of Thanksgiving. I love it. I love seeing ham be put in its place. Yeah, I know that makes you happy. Lemon meringue pie. If my father-in-law were here, Mm -hmm. I don't think this is the same thing, by the way. My aunt, Megan's aunt, so my aunt-in-law, which sounds weird, she makes a lemon icebox pie that puts rolling on the floor every every year. Okay. She hand makes, does homemade whipped cream, Mm -hmm. which I just eat the whipped cream. It's fantastic. Yeah. She makes a lemon icebox pie that he he would kill somebody for it. Yeah. He would literally murder somebody. And it's beloved in the Hall family, the young family. So this is lemon meringue pie. Which all that being said, I don't I don't love lemon pies. It's just a little too lemony for me, which makes sense. Yeah. For me, it'd be a hard pass. I'm gonna put it in might try. Okay. Because that's something that, like, I, I don't know how often I've been offered a slice of lemon pie. And I, I tend to like lemon-flavored desserts. You uh, love a lemon icebox. Yeah, probably. But, like, if I see that, if I see a dessert that I normally wouldn't see, I'm probably going to Do you like it. meringues? I don't love meringues. I don't like meringue. Um, You're probably but, not going to enjoy this, then. But I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't do might try because yeah, yeah, yeah. if you feel like you might try, you might try it. For me, it's a hard pass. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in might try for now. People love meringues. That's just never. I, been I don't my understand favorite. it. It's, it's never been my favorite. It's just sour foam. Yes, it's disgusting. It, it 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 is it is literally it is literally an obstacle keeping you from the thing that you actually care about. Yes, I do think you're not gonna enjoy a <laughs> meringue. I'm just telling you, if you don't like meringues and you kind of sort of like lemons, you know what. Hard pass. You've talked me out of it. Mac and cheese is What's in a, between might try and hard pass? Uh, no, Nothing. Might try and hard pass. Or oh, I thought it was, oh, you had it not bad as a staging area. Yeah. No, I had it in might try. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, mac and cheese is an S tier. S tier. S tier all day. Doesn't matter if it's regular mac and cheese or baked mac and cheese. It's yeah, I'm getting an entire plate of mac and cheese. Any argument? My only argument would be it as a Thanksgiving food because I don't know if I always have it at Thanksgiving. I do at my at my family's house we yeah. do. I don't know if it at the other side of the family we do. But that's I mean we're splitting hairs. It's yeah. It's great. Yeah. I'm fine with it being as here. It's it's a staple of any big dinner. We could we could seriously have a tier list conversation about different types of mac and cheese. We absolutely could. Because there's so much nuance and there is bad mac and cheese. There is. Like craft box mac and cheese is not good, but that's it's not good compared to really good mac and it cheese. It has gotten better. I wouldn't know. It, it, it's gotten better because they actually um, started using like um, vegetables and stuff to do the job of certain artificial. 
You know what I'm a big fan of? And it may be a hot take. Probably not. Hamburger Helper. Hamburger Helper's great. We ate that all the time growing up. Yeah. And that's technically a mac and cheese. It's, yeah, it's a mac and cheese with extra steps. Yes. Anyway, yeah. I don't even think we need to go. It's I'm great with it being asked. Yeah. Okay. Pecan pie. That's up there. All right. So it's staged in great, but I, I'm just putting it there because that's the smallest category right now. Jenny H., my mother-in-law, makes a chocolate pecan pie that Ooh, is delightful. It sounds wonderful. I'm trying to think if I get seconds of pecan pie. I don't feel like I do. I feel like I eat it and enjoy it a lot, but yeah. I don't get seconds. Dessert is a hard one just because if there's a spread of dessert. And and anytime we do a Thanksgiving thing, there's a spread. Yeah. Like, I think the only thing that may go up for me out of desserts it may be banana pudding or, I mean, ice cream, of course, but I don't know if banana pudding's on here. It should be. Yeah. But what do you think? I'm fine with it being in great. Okay. I do like a good pecan pie though. Good stuff. It's one of my favorite pies. So here's something I thought was interesting with this list. And we're going to go ahead and do both of these at the same time. Okay. Apple pie and apple pie with ice cream are two separate items. Interesting. An a la mode. Yes. So to me, if, if I'm offered, Hey, here's apple pie. Would you like ice cream with that? I'm not saying no to the ice cream. Yeah. It's a done deal. So apple pie is a hard pass. Interesting. But apple pie with ice cream, it's probably a great for me. Cause like, I know I'm going to like it. You know, apple pie is hard to mess up. And all emoting something is it's, it's only, it only improves it. So I don't like apple pie. Um, apple pie for me is like, a I might try. Okay. Um, but that's once again, it's like peach cobbler, same concept. Yeah. Because it's in pie form. It's a little bit more palatable for me, but I'm, I don't have an opinion on it. Okay. So I'm great. I'm great. Keeping it where it is. Yeah. I'll leave it at great. It may move because I saw something in the dessert section that is probably going to kill it. Anything with chocolate is going to kill it for me. Yeah. Pumpkin pie. Not a huge pumpkin pie guy. I, I'm not, but my, uh, my mamma, the Italian grandmother made pumpkin pie that made me a believer in pumpkin pie. So it's in what? My try. I just put it in my try as a staging for me. It's a hard pass, but it's because okay. I don't like pumpkin pie. This yeah. is where Tyler Carroll comes in and says, it tastes the same as sweet potato <laughs> pie. No, it doesn't. Tyler. No, it doesn't. Yeah, I need to prop. That's one I need to make a short of. The, I, I haven't even, I, believe it or not, at, at the time of this recording, I had such a backlog of shorts that I still haven't edited that one for shorts. Yes, we need to get that out. We do. Tyler Holden's episode and someone else, I think it was Nick Wilson's episode, those were a gold mine yes. for shorts. They were great. So I've I've been... Oh, I feel sure that Tyler's will be as well. Yeah. It, yeah. Um, the problem with it was that Tyler, um, Tyler's a hard person to keep in 60 seconds. Mm. That's where I struggle. <laughs> Makes sense. Cause, cause some of these clips are just like, how do I make this comprehensive in 60 seconds? Yeah. So, okay. Where were we? Uh, uh, it was pumpkin pie. Pumpkin yes, pie. pumpkin pie. I'm just going to stick Completely it in Completely forgettable. We already forgot about it. I'm going to stick it in my dry. Sure. Because it, it, it can depend. Bread rolls? S or A. A. I mean. It's an A. Yeah, you're not filling your plate with, with bread rolls. No. That's a, that's they a, don't even make it on the plate. <laughs> but it's not, it's not going lower than A. No, it's not. It has to be up there. Cash would probably fill his whole plate with rolls if he yeah. could. I'm the kind of guy that the bread rolls don't hit the plate. They go adjacent to the plate. Uh, mine are stacked on top. It's the mountain climber that's climbing the mountain of I see. food. I see. I usually have like two at a time next to the plate. Mine is a uh, mopper. It mops up everything at the end. I always leave one as yeah. the last thing I eat because it mops everything else up. Yeah, that makes sense. I usually just pick at them while I eat the rest of the food. Or I stick some turkey between it. Which yeah, you'll do classic. with biscuits this year. Yep. Red velvet cake. 
This is an interesting choice for a Thanksgiving. It's food. an interesting choice for a thing. Red, uh, red velvet cake is my number two favorite dessert of all time. I love red velvet. And I know it's just chocolate cake with food dye, but the cream cheese icing. Yes. If someone brought red velvet cake, I would get it 100% of the time. Yeah. So you think it's great for me. Yeah. I, I, yeah. It probably shouldn't be because it's a Thanksgiving list, but red velvet is so much my second favorite dessert. I mean, to me, what what defines dessert for a Thanksgiving meal? It it's it's based on who's there. Because with with Thanksgiving, like the food, there's expectations, there's conventions. But with the dessert, sure pumpkin pie is like a staple, apple pie is probably a staple. But because dessert is so often a thing that people bring, um, and usually the person preparing dinner doesn't make dessert because they're making the dinner, and yeah. so that people will bring desserts that they like to make. So part of Thanksgiving convention, I would say, with desserts specifically, is a, a potluck kind of feel. So I don't think any dessert is off the table for Thanksgiving. Do you know what I heard on a podcast? That what? a guy of Asian descent, I think he's actually Polynesian, um, which is still considered Asian, isn't it? Or is that is Polynesian different? Um, Doesn't matter. Would that be Pacific Islander? Doesn't matter. He brings to all of his friends' givings fried rice, and apparently it's wonderful. Good fried rice is good. But he says it's good because it mixes well with almost everything, Yeah, and it just kind of... If you're super heavy on Thanksgiving stuff, it's like a breath of fresh air to just have a little bit of fried rice. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, great for red velvet cake? I love red velvet cake. Yeah. It was the cake at my wedding. It was my groom's cake. My groom's cake was orange. Why? Um, Why would you do that? Because I think with a plan... I honestly don't remember like anything. You had an orange cake? I think red velvet may have been our actual cake. I don't remember. I My wedding day was a blur. So interesting. Yeah. Um, the plan was, I think Anna told the lady that made my the groom's cake that I like orange cream, like orange vanilla. That, oh. that And so I think that's... What she went with? That's what she tried, but I think it ended up just being like a like an orange cake. Yeah. Which just, it wasn't bad. It had actual chunks of like orange slices in it. Which, oh, yeah. I had red velvet cake and it was wonderful. Yeah, red velvet cake is always good. Betsy made mine. Thank you, Betsy. Sweet potato casserole. What's lower than great? Really, not bad. For for me, it's either great or getting seconds. I love sweet potato. It's not getting seconds for me. I'll leave it at great. Okay. We can do that. Buckeye pie. Never heard of it. Never had it. No opinion. Okay. I'm going to stage it in not bad while I Google what that yeah, is. Yeah, I about to say. Give me, give me an idea of what it is, and, and I can are, probably piece together for you. You what are I on think. camera while I do this. Buckeye, Ohio. <coughs> Ohio meaning that it has oh. wheat in it. Or there's, there's Buckeye is a with a crust made of Betty Crocker double chocolate chunk cookies and a creamy peanut butter filling. Oh my god! So, so it's chocolate peanut butter pie. That's probably a tier for that me. That might be an a tier. <laughs> That's pro. I'm like, having Buckeye pie it, 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 tomorrow. It hits perfect to be an a tier for me. Say it again, Betty Crocker. It is chocolate chunk and crust. This, this is for. Specifically, the Betty Crocker recipe, well, but it was sense. the uh, double chocolate chunk cookies. That's what the crust is made of, which is already just a win. And then creamy peanut butter filling, and then it's got a ch chocolate ganache topping. A la mode would just take it over the <laughs> edge because that's what a la mode does. It, it takes it over the it edge. It does. It elevates. So to me, it, it th this hits the perfect. I'm probably getting second to that. Yeah, I'm probably getting two. It's the perfect A tier because I've never heard of it. But as soon as I know what it is, it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Give me a piece of that. That was delightful. Give me another one. 
because I've never had it before. Yeah. So I'm going to go and yep. go for more. It's all right. A tier. Yup. We have our first A tier dessert. I think I think it deserves it. That sounds great. Scalloped potatoes. I love scalloped potatoes. Yeah. That's that's probably a B or an A. Have we said although, mashed potatoes already? Although, yeah, mashed potatoes are an A. I would not put them on par with mashed potatoes. No, I'm fine with great. Okay. Mm-hmm. A, B, and not bad. Mm. Not bad or great. What do you think? Make the call. If mashed potatoes are in the running, I'm not getting scalloped potatoes. If I don't have mashed potatoes, I will gladly eat ma- uh, scalloped potatoes. So that's going to be a not bad. Probably not bad. Way more middle of the roads than I thought it was going to be. I'm not going to lie to you. Well, I, I figured it'd kind of end up like this because notice how many tiers. It's four tiers that are all something that you, that you know you'll like. Yeah. At least a little bit. And then one tier is a maybe and then... Two tiers are absolutely not. So it's gonna you're gonna get a good bit of middle of the road that way. Pineapple sauce. F. Really? I've never even had it. Well, I, I don't know what it is. But that's why I'm thinking maybe because I love pineapple. Pineapple's great. I like pineapple. I'm a as pineapple pi- on pizza pizza. See, guy. I'm not. I like pineapple as pineapple. Yeah. I don't like pineapple that you add to stuff. So you probably would might try it. For me, it's a hard pass. I'm gonna say I might try just because I don't know what it is. And I like pineapple. It's the most optimistic you've ever been in your whole life. Other than the lemon meringue, which is wild. That wasn't optimism. That was uh that was foolishness. <laughs> <laughs> spinach artichoke dip. People love it. I don't love spinach artichoke. I don't either. So okay. it's a hard pass. Yeah. Squash casserole. I hate squat casserole. If you put it on my plate, I'm not coming to Christmas. All right, Christmas is canceled. I'm fine with Megan that. Megan and her family absolutely, uh, let me repeat, absolutely adore squash casserole. It is their favorite. Squash casserole is their favorite food. That's, I hate it. Yeah. With a passion. I can tell. What is our Christmas cancel ones? Uh, Brussels sprouts and squash casserole. I love it. <laughs> The only other thing that should be on that is cabbage. I hate cabbage. Good to know. Cabbage can go burn. Stuffing. Oh, that's at the top. S tier? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. The only thing I'm thinking about moving up is mashed potatoes. I I love mashed potatoes. Yeah. I feel like mashed potatoes and stuffing dressing should be in the same place personally. Let's move up mashed potatoes, and I'm going to move up turkey to getting seconds. That's, That's probably reasonable. Yeah. Is that our right. last one? Oh, we still uh, have more. Two, two more. Oh, I thought we were done. Cheesecake. What a wild dessert choice. So you you might think so initially, but it. I feel like it would show up to more Thanksgiving than because it's really easy to just go to a store and That's buy a true. cheesecake. I'm fine putting it where you put it. With red velvet and pecan. I oh. would say not bad. Okay. Probably. Because like it's, uh, stacked up against those other desserts. That's true. It should go down one. It should go down one. And the final one, cranberry sauce, oh, yeah. specifically the can. I don't like cranberry sauce. So this is going to be a might try for me because... You've never tried cranberry sauce? No, I have. But the might try is because, one, it depends on the cranberry sauce. But, two, I'm not eating cranberry sauce. Like, I'm not just sticking it on the plate and, and like, you know, putting a, eating it with a spoon. I'm going to combine it with something. Oh. So the might try is what can I com- what could I come up with to combine this? Cranberry sauce with a turkey biscuit. That may be something you're into. That may be something I'm into. I do know that um one of my favorite places to eat is a um what's uh Burger King. How dare you? <laughs> I tried chicken fries by the way. Oh, that, what did we think? That was the most underwhelming nothing. I, d- I told you that. I said it's worth you trying. I said it's not going to blow you away, yeah. but it's worth trying. It was not worth trying. <laughs> um, but a chain. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you for distracting me with. You're welcome. Um, Earl of Sandwich. Have you ever heard of that place? No. Um, the one I've heard of the Earl of Sandwich. It, it's based off that. Yeah. Um, but there's one at Disney Springs, a place that I've mentioned a few times. Um, just a few and there's there's a few of them around the world but uh there's actually one in paris when we went to paris um there's at one their at, disney or just in their, paris at their, in general? at their disney um 
they make such good sandwiches. And one of the sandwiches it's that they nice. have, yeah, one of the sandwiches they have is called the holiday turkey. They, it's, I'm going to see if I can remember all this correctly. Um, turkey stuffing and cranberry sauce, I think, just on a sandwich. There you go. It is, I'm going to use this word for the second time in this episode, immaculate. It is one of the best sandwiches I've ever had. And cranberry, whenever I see cranberry sauce, that's what I think of. When you're at like a Disney Springs, is there an Irish restaurant in Disney Springs? I think so. There's at least a pub. I think that my cousin is one of the chefs of that Irish pub in Orlando. Really? Because he was talking about how, I was talking to my uncle about how he he's a chef mm-hmm. and how he's working in Orlando. And then he just mentioned like, yeah, he's at an Irish place. And I was like, oh, is it like McGuire's? You know, like a big chain thing. He's like, no, I think it's like in Disney. And I went, in Disney Springs, he went, that's it. And so yeah, that- I think he's at like the Irish pub in Disney Springs. I think I've shout out Nick. You're not listening to this, but it's fine. If you are not good to see you. Yeah. I, I think I, I think I saw, I've seen that place. I don't think I've been in there, but I think I've seen it. But yeah, that's uh. let me make sure we can do a once over for the tier list. Throw it back on the screen so people can get a look at it. Yeah. All right. So fill the plate. We have brown gravy, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes and stuffing. Solid. Solid. Um, getting seconds, turkey, bread rolls, and Buckeye pie, which may be my new favorite pie. <laughs> I do need to try it. Yes. Uh, great. Interestingly enough, great is almost entirely dessert. Uh-huh. It's pecan pie, apple pie and ice cream, red velvet cake, and sweet potato casserole. That doesn't surprise me. I love dessert. Yeah. Not bad. Is peach cobbler, corn on the cob, cream corn, green bean casserole, scalloped potatoes, and cheesecake. Would you like to move anything up to great? Because I feel like... The, n- I feel like if anything, green bean casserole moves up. But I'm fine leaving it where it is. I'm okay with that. Even it out a little bit. Because cream bean casserole is usually pretty great. Uh-huh. Uh, might try roasted vegetables, biscuits, candied yams, pecan or pumpkin pie. Pineapple sauce and cranberry sauce. Do should we move biscuits up? No, because I'm not sure yet about how I feel about okay. it. There's somebody who's losing their minds because pumpkin pie is so low, and I love it. Yeah. Um. Let us know in the comments. We'll, we'll definitely read it. Uh, hard pass is baked potato, and remember this is in the context of Thanksgiving. Yeah. Baked potato, cornbread sausageless white gravy it looks disgusting mm. like it just looks like it's like a Mc- spoon dipping cream it's into like coffee. you went and bought mccormick's gravy mix yeah. and didn't do anything to it yes um you know what if that touches my plate christmas is canceled. <laughs> <laughs> um honey baked ham lemon meringue Love pie it. apple pie spinach or choked up any, any changes? i feel like hard pass really just depends on it's just the food's it's the placeholder for foods that you don't like. Yeah. With the exception of baked potato, just because that didn't make sense. Or yeah, or or it's the or it's the context of yes. like there's something better that hits the same. Yeah. If that touches my plate, Christmas is canceled, is Brussels sprouts, squash casserole, and white gravy. I, I mean, you I, moved white gravy there, that's fine. I mean just because two of those are completely on me. Yeah. The the context of white gravy. It's just like why? What are you? But doing? also, it's gravy. So if it touches my plate, it's touching everything. Yes. So, so you've ruined. You've everything. ruined this whole plate. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, I good thought, deal. I forgot about that. That was fun. What's our time? Uh, our time is um, hour thirty. Love it. We, we went, always say it's not going to take forever. I didn't because. think that tier list would take that long, but I think we we went. For a while where every single item we had we stopped and say. said something about like our experience with it so i like it, it all right good. uh let us know what you think about our tier list if you hate it fantastic tell us what, all about should, it. should there be a poll the poll let's just make it the question yeah and say favorite, favorite thanksgiving food favorite thanksgiving food um 
If you want to do a poll, you could do hammer turkey, which how about is this? a classic. How about this? Um, either hammer turkey or the poll be biscuits, cornbread, or rolls. That's fine. Which one do you think? I've, we can do the uh, the cornbread roll thing is, I think, interesting. Yeah. I feel like roll is going to win yeah. all out. Um, don't forget that if you rate or review or like or in, just engage with this podcast, um, it's very helpful. One of the things we've been trying to do is really push these out to different people. So you can go to the share button on Spotify, on uh, Apple, YouTube, and you can copy the link and send it to people. And that's a great way to get people to see what we do. That way it builds out the podcast. It's very exciting. We enjoy it. Um, leaving rating and reviews pushes it within the apps like Spotify and Apple. Um, but really just engaging with it, it's a lot of fun. If there's some different shorts that you'd like to see, reach out to us. Say, hey, the part about, you know, Logan hating ham, I think would be a good short. Or the fact that, like, we don't know what Buckeye pie is. Like, that's, that's stuff that you can tell us about. Um, and we always try to shout those people out. Those would be great shorts. You identified those so quickly. It's, I have a gift. Okay. My gift is identifying shorts and knowing what time we are on places. It's true. What a superpower. It's a gift. I enjoy it. All right. Um, other than that, this is our solo episode. So we'll get out of here and we'll see you next week. Bye. Give them, Steven, cut to you and then give them like a, like a YouTuber, like cut scene look like, like that. Like do something. What YouTuber cuts like that? I don't know. Thank <laughs> you.